This is beginner project number three. You've got yourself a laser, that's a good deal. And I'm doing these uh, beginner projects on several different brands of lasers, so it, it may not pertain to your brand, but the, the settings and, every, and the procedures will be pretty much the same. So what we're gonna be doing today is taking one of these stainless steel scrapers, like you get a Dollar Tree, Dollar 25. Now I suggest you get a couple of them, not a big investment is you're going to need one to do a little bit of practice on before you actually do your project. We'll go into this in depth coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the loft above the shop. And what we're going to be doing here today is engraving some stainless steel, give you a little practice, get you familiar with how it works. Uh, again, Dollar Tree, these... Uh, scrapers you find them in the kitchen gadget section a buck and a quarter and there'll be a label on which will be just a dickens to get off but if you soak it in water long enough it does eventually come off i wish they wouldn't use labels like that at any rate we're going to be engraving on the back side and you'll want to have it clean and i washed it with just dish soap and then to make sure there was no fingerprints or anything on there i cleaned it with a little bit of windex and a paper towel so that's all nice and clean so the laser I'm going to be using today is uh, Adam Stack P9 M40. It's a 10 watt laser, cantilever design, sitting here on the table. And the reason I'm using this one is because it's small and it fits on my table up here in the loft. I don't normally use lasers up here in this room, but down in the shop I've got four lasers running and all my space is used up. Get close to Christmas, we got a lot of orders for things and I got to get them out. So you'll see a couple pieces of wood stacked up here. What's the reason for that? This is my little practice one here. I've done a lot of practice work on. That is because we're gonna be engraving on the back side and you've got this little curl thing here. So you need to be able to place that under the laser head without this curl throwing things off. And this one's all warped and funky now because it's been through the war, so to speak, with all these different engraving tests and things I've done on it. These uh, do tend to warp, they're cheap, but they're also good to practice on. So I'm going to take you on the computer, I'm going to show you what graphic we're going to be putting on here. I'll show you how I have this set up here in Lightburn. Uh, this is being done on the Atomstack P9 M40. So a little cantilever laser, 10 watt. So here's my graphic here, and you can uh, use whatever type of graphic you like. Uh, this was obtained from designbundles.net, and I have done some changes to it. So one of the things you need to do is measure your scraper, and I'm going to be working on what you would call the backside, and that's why you see the uh, wood stacked up on the laser, because I need to uh, clear that curl. I decided to do this on the back, so I have a little bit more space to work with. So what you see here, this box, that is T1. That is a tool path. That does not engrave. But it gives me my work area, which is 5.75 by 4 high, as you can see up here. So then I just size my graphic to fit inside there. Now one thing I do need to do here, because I've made a lot of changes uh, to how this is going to engrave after doing some playing around. Take this and group it so that if I do move it, everything moves at once. And I want to center that. It's this little bullseye guy here. Then I'll put it right in the middle. Now I've got some different settings here for what I'm doing. The letters here are going to be done with offset fill. And if you Right click on your layer up there, it'll make that blink. Then you'll know where that layer is. Next one is a line engrave, and this is going around my little cupcake there at the top. See? And that is being done in two passes 400 millimeters per minute, 100% power. And then my cherry on top, I'm doing a fill up there with my cherry at 400 millimeters per minute, 100% power. Then we have a couple little designs on the cup, and we have sprinkles on the cupcake frosting. That is being done at 400 millimeters per minute, 90% power, 
which gives me just a little bit different color there. There's my sprinkles and my lines and cupcake. So that's all my settings. And of course, I will frame this before I do the project, which I will show you on camera when we are on the laser. So how long is it going to take to make this? Here, this little window is going to take 34 minutes and three seconds. That's what it's going to look like when it's done. So we'll head back to live on the camera. Okay, the settings I've shown there are for a 10 watt laser. If you have a 5 watt laser, it's not exactly half the time. It's, it's not linear. You're going to have to do a little bit of a test. That's why I decided to get a, another one of these. So you can start out trying on a 5 watt laser at 200 millimeters per minute and try one at 100 and one at 250 and get in that area, just make little squares or do a letter or something and pick out which one gives you the best engrave. But the settings I have here are what I use on a 10 watt laser on this particular stainless. Now let's say you bought a uh, stainless putty knife for example and you want to engrave your name on it or something. You may need to do a little bit of a test there because not all grades of stainless are the same. They vary widely. In fact, some uh, types of stainless you can stick a magnet on and other types you can't. Depends on the nickel content. And something else I'll point out too is you're not actually engraving the stainless. You're etching the surface. A diode laser will not actually engrave metal. It just etches it. And not all metals. So, you know, if you had a piece of steel, you could go back and forth all day on bare steel and you're not going to do anything to it without having a coating on there. Same thing holds true with aluminum. If it's coated or anodized, it's very easy to do some very nice engraving on it. If it's just bare aluminum, it ain't going to do anything. So what you need to do next, and this is very, very important, is have your laser focused. Make sure your focus is accurate, your lens is clean. Uh, this does not have air assist, but we don't need it on stainless steel. So next thing you want to do is find the center of your project, because in this case, I'm working from what they call current position. This laser does not have limit switches on it. It has no homing function. Therefore, it's very, very difficult to work from what I, what's called absolute coordinates. So therefore, I work from current position. I get my piece set, as I have here. I have my focus set. I know where the center is, and you can find that by taking a ruler here and going diagonals, just making a little pencil mark in the middle, and focus the center of your laser there. And that pencil mark come right off. You can use an eraser to take it off. It's not a permanent thing. It'll help you get your layout. After that, you need to frame it. And I'm going to get you in close here, and we're going to do a little framing on this. I think I'm pretty close to having this in the right spot. Okay, so I've got my work set, and my wood here is a, just a piece of scrap quarter-inch plywood underneath a little block of uh, three-quarter-inch pine. That raises it up enough to get that curl edge off of the table itself. So what I need to do now here is click on Frame. This will frame the work. Now I have the laser with the back facing the camera, and the reason for that is because stainless steel when you're engraving on it, it will refract light all over the place and it would it blurs up the camera really bad therefore I have the uh, viewing window facing me so there again make sure you are where you want to be I have my laser set to have the laser beam on low power when it's framing so I can see where that beam's falling Okay, once you're happy with where it is, and I'm letting this just frame one more time as I watch it, something else you need to do. Put on your safety glasses. I, I wear these goggles by Cloudray because uh, I have prescription glasses. And also the proper color for a uh, blue diode laser is orange, not red or green. The red or green are better than, anything, better than nothing, I should say, but it will be better on your eyes over the long term if you're using the proper color and that is orange and you need to have a high density on it. So I'll get my goggles on here and I will hit start.
So you can probably see the light refracting off the back of that. That's uh, a lot brighter than you think it is. And if you were on my side, you would uh, know why I have my goggles on. Okay, so while this is running, I want to bring up a couple little safety things. And number one is have that eye protection on, even if your laser is shielded. When you're engraving on stainless steel or glass, or a mirror especially, that light will refract all over the place and if you look at it wrong it will damage your eyes. So keep that in mind. Also another one of my little safety things is keep kids and pets away from your laser when you're using it and don't leave it unattended. That doesn't mean you have to be right here and watch it every second. But be in the area. Things can go wrong, things can happen. Of course you're unlikely to start a fire on a piece of stainless, but you could on a piece of wood. I have never had it happen. I, I did light some cardboard on fire on my shop table once, demonstrating laser, but I was right there. Another good thing to have is a fire extinguisher, and I do have one in here. I have one back in my other laser room. We have two down in the shop. Cheap insurance, the little ones like you put in your kitchen, ABC fire extinguisher from Kid A, or however you pronounce that name, Kitty. Today, I think it is. 15 bucks. Well worth the investment. So if you're not familiar with this style laser, this is what they call a portable laser. You can pick it up and take it places. It's lightweight. It does have a uh, detachable screen on it here and you can actually work without being tethered to a computer by putting your G-code on a TF card and you can run it from the screen. I'm not doing that here. I'm actually running it from my laptop. But that is an option and you can uh, save your project like in Lightburn you can save the g-code to that TF card stick it in there you can run it that way There's, that option is there if you wish um, I'll put a link in the description on where to get one this type of laser if you're interested in it again it's an Atom Stack P9 M40 10 watt I do have a mounted on a board now, there is a layout grid underneath it and I use this for small projects Okay, so I set a box right here to block that light so I can't see it, so I can talk to you without looking like some alien insect with the big goggles on. However, again, eye protection is very, very important when using a laser. So, getting back to this project, I may have glossed over a lot of this and light burn a little too quick. And if you're just befuddled by it and don't understand it, uh, there are lots of tutorials available on YouTube. Lightburn has some. Uh, where you can kind of get introduced to it. If you want to get in-depth and learn it from everything from the raw beginner up to some more advanced things, I encourage you to check out a guy. His name's Rich, and his channel is the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And he does a great job with his tutorials on how to use Lightburn, how to create libraries, how to, how to do your settings, how to uh, run different types of tests to what I call burn tests. He's, he's got a forum you can join. He's got free libraries to download. Just all kinds of good stuff. I have no intentions of even attempting to duplicate. But he's already done because he has done such a great job on it. And no, I'm not sponsored by him. He's just a great guy. So there'll be a link in the description on his channel if you'd like to go and check out some of his light burn videos. And I, he has some projects on there too you can do. And they look like they would be fun. I'll also put a link in the description for this uh, particular graphic. This is from designbundles.net. Is, this one is not free. You would have to purchase it. But you feel free to use your own graphic tour. Or maybe create your own. Take your fonts and create your own graphics on there. These uh, little stainless uh, shopping things or whatever you call it are cheap. Fun to practice on. you got two sides. Uh, the other side, you don't have quite as much work area, but there again, you, you've got plenty of place to play, and if you uh, are making your test small, you can do a whole bunch of them on one. See here, I was, uh, actually a lot of these letters up here are because I had a, uh, one of my lasers was skipping, and I couldn't figure out why. I don't know, maybe you can see that one A right there where it skipped right in the center, and it, I thought, well, the belts are loose, so I tightened it up and I still had that. And the more I played with it, the more I thought, there's something wrong there. So I actually flipped the laser upside down. It wasn't this one, it was a different one. And that little tooth belt 
It follows everything in there. Actually had a one of those little teeth missing or a nub missing. So it would skip when it got to the sprocket. So replace the belt. Problem went away. Got good engraved. But you know, it, I, granted I didn't need to practice on the stainless, but that's what I was working with on that other laser was some stainless. And like I said, these are cheap. Okay, engraving's done. I wasn't right here when it finished. I was in the next room, but here's our finished scraper. That's what this is called, it's a scraper. So as you can see, I got perfect engrave on that stainless. Got my little cupcake on top there with a the cherry on top of it. Baker's gonna bake. And if you wanted to, you could put someone's name on the other side if you like. Now, it does warp this a little bit, but it's not hard to straighten back out. Just a little bit of a bend like that and you're back to being flat again. But there again, it's this is a real quick little job you can do on your laser. Get familiar with it and how to do stainless steel. Inexpensive, buck and a quarter for one of these. If you screw it up, you're not out much. You just grab another one. I always grab four or five of these when I'm at a Dollar Tree because I use them for obviously this, but I use it for a lot of other things too. I've actually cut these up and used the stainless for some other projects. So it's a good cheap source of stainless too. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. And yeah, we're like everybody, other YouTuber, we're always looking for subscribers. So hit that subscribe button, you hit the bell. Next to it, you'll be notified when I post another video. Roger in the shop. Good luck with your laser. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.